coronavirus quickly spreading across Mexico, we needed to take ourselves out of society and find a safe place where we could isolate. Locals were scared and their hostility was understandable. This video follows our three months at Rancho Pacifico Baja. outside on a fire for the first time in five weeks. First time in five weeks we've stayed in our camper van. How's it feel? So nice. Yes. So good. After Amy's attack, we spent four weeks living in a casita. Now with her cast off, she was feeling much better and she was desperate like us to be outdoors again. After a couple of days, we were joined on the ranch by our new friends, Hanno and Kiki. Like us, they were determined to see out the pandemic in Mexico. Quarantine camp, take two. Over the upcoming months, our friendship would grow as we tried to keep ourselves entertained. fermented mango juice. Desperate times with the beer. Beer brewing is advancing. While we were staying at the casita, we were visited by a starving stray cat. After a week on the ranch, we went to check on him and found he was sick. Unable to leave him behind, Hanu and Kiki took him back to our quarantine camp and Chico became a permanent part of our lives. Dana and Sabrina had bought a tiny piece of paradise and we were grateful that they were allowing us to isolate out in the wild. So our solar panels are dead, our batteries are dead, we are at Henry getting a new solar panel which is a beast which is going to take up our entire roof but it will give us an, an amazing amount of electricity. We've had um, quite a lot of problems with our batteries while we've been here. Ever since Christmas we went to Walmart to get them checked, they were being a problem for ages. It's one of the main things I've learnt doing this fan conversion that you really shouldn't cut costs and try and buy cheap parts. Uh, we're currently at the Walmart garage trying to uh, test our 
leisure batteries that we bought off eBay and they seem to be failing after six months which isn't good. I think we just have bad AGMs so we also have a cheap Chinese solar panel on the roof that's failed in Baja. Our solar charger just put a big cross over our batteries this morning and we're really struggling to do anything with them really it's rubbish so we've decided to completely redo our system because we don't want any more of these problems when we go further away from places where it's easy to get stuff we might have gone a bit over the top with our solar panel though that is 410 watts right there and it's going on our pop top somehow and it's gonna go with three new lithium batteries as well because I am so done with being out of power so this is the old solar panel this is a 150 watt flexible panel it was reasonably cheap um, probably why it's gone wrong I took the old one off and now we're just trying to take all the glue off that held the old one down before we can start making the new rack. It's a bit of a boring job. Currently trying to build the frame. Yeah. It's like 40 degrees, quite warm. So today we are piecing together the framework for the solar panel. We've had to set it quite high so we can get the surfboards underneath as well. Kind of uh, throw it together and see what happens type of thing. Lifting solar panel test. Yeah. So we have our new panel up. What were you doing up there? Adjusting our solar panel wiring. The new panel. It's all done now. Nice. We decided to upgrade our panel, which we already did, and we put a big aluminium rack on the roof with the space for the surfboards. But the panel weighs 30 kilos, and our gas struts barely hold our roof up. So we've had to buy new ones. So these are the old gas struts. We got new ones delivered from England and we've just fitted them all around the camper which is actually really easy. So now we just need to make sure we can actually get the roof down but it's staying up which is a good start. So the big day has arrived. We have new batteries which is exciting. So um, our old ones are completely dead really, they barely run the fridge anymore. So I've bought 180 amp hours worth of lithium batteries which I'm going to try and install today. Hopefully quickly because it's really hot. So I'm just going to show you what our old setup looked like. Okay, so in the back of Ruby, here's the engine bay I'm sitting on top of. We have our old batteries. I've already taken them apart a little bit so... We have two 115 amp hour AGMs. Um, and what have we got connected to them? So this is 40 amp for the speakers in the back. And then up here we've got these two red wires. So this one is emergency start. There's a switch on the other side and if you turn the switch it connects this directly to the starter batteries in case we flatten our starter battery. This one here, this is for the voltage sensitive relay to charge the mobile drive. And then over on this one, we had our positive was here, and here's the wiring for it. We had um, this is our Nuku charger for hookup for the generator. These two smaller ones, this is the solar panels. 
and then we have two yeah yes two two other big wires one of them is the inverter and the other one is all of the other 12 volt electrics like the fridge and the water pump and the usb sockets and all that kind of thing lights etc so all of these are coming out I'm gonna do some new wiring because this is some of our old connectors here which is a mess and also the new lithium batteries have screw terminals not not these kind not like regular car batteries they're more screw on like this one here so we need to do some changes okay so new batteries are in here are our new ones could have actually fitted another one in as well but that would have been a little bit bit greedy but here's the old ones outside on the floor you can see them uh, <laughs> this is how big they are so <clears throat> here's the difference between why we're doing this and uh, we're not replacing them with AGMs so this is the second set of AGMs that have broken in these are only a year old and we even fitted a battery protector to them so we didn't even discharge them much more than they ever should have been they just can't really handle this constant usage i think they're more like weekender kind of thing not a everyday live in your gavan kind of thing so positives and negatives of lithium versus agm the main big difference probably that puts people off is the expense so here we have these three so these are victron super pack they are 60 amp hour each so gives us 180 amp hours they each cost 500 dollars that's actually a good price for lithium obviously it's still expensive but that is cheap lithium obviously new technology it's kind of coming down so the total cost of that battery pack there is fifteen hundred dollars the total cost of the batteries i just took out was about 350 dollars massive price difference the ones that i just took out 230 amp hours which gives you a usable amperage of 115 because you can only discharge safely to 50 percent and even then it can still fry your batteries apparently the ones that we fitted you could 100 percent discharge them 80%, 90% kind of totally fine, which means that even though technically we have less amp hours on the new set, we have more usable amp hours. So actually, we have a lot more power now. Lithium doesn't react as much to voltage drops, so when you turn on something that pulls power, it won't just drag the batteries down the same way. They have a much longer lifespan, they're much lighter. I can pick one of these up with one hand very easily. I just had to get Kiki to help me take the other ones out because they're so heavy. Like, I can just about pick one up, like, by myself, but it's heavy and it was hard to get them in. These ones, super easy. Expensive, but after having four AGMs, but I'm, I'm ready for some proper power. So, excited to fit these. have our new batteries in. And this is the battery charger. That I'm just finishing off fitting. You can see the shunt behind it at the top. That, yeah, that is for the battery monitor, which is going to be going in. The charge controller is already fitted. So I think we're really, really nearly ready to turn it on. Whoop, whoop. Exciting. Connecting wire to connecting wire. Main fuse board. Base amp. Inverter battery monitor. You made me look fast. Breathe in. <laughs> Ready? Yes. Oh, it's glaring. The fan works. We're live, baby. Scary times. Nothing has exploded. <laughs> It turned out that our celebrations were a little bit premature. So on a drive into town yesterday, our new solar system stopped working. 
Uh, we examined it this morning and found that our smart solar controller had broken, uh, the internal fuse had blown. After tracing it back we found a short circuit in one of the wiring, which is a pain. I mean this system costed a lot of money and it lasted barely a week. Uh, Willow's trying to diagnose a solution and we'll see what happens. So you can see the problem there. So we are taking everything out and we're going to try and recut these holes a bit tidier. Me. Nearly got it. I think the warranty is still valid. What do you reckon? Don't see any problem myself. Yeah, I gotcha. So we've taken the smart solar charger apart. <laughs> Fucked it up completely. Uh, there's lots of silicon, so it takes a lot of patience to rip it apart. Yeah, because they put all of the stuff in the silicon, so you can't take it apart without breaking it. So this has come off the board, so that should be hopefully fairly easy to resolder when we have to change this fuse. But it's a lot better than sending them an email, them saying, oh, it's not under warranty and not getting anywhere, so we're going to fix it ourselves. Them jewellery skills coming in handy again. Although at times our life on the ranch was frustrating, we couldn't help but admire the beauty of the Mexican desert. I can't for the life of me figure out why someone would drive all the way out to the desert just to chuck a load of rubbish out. It's really sad. Yeah, what you got there? The boogie man. The baby cactus that ripped off the big cactus is probably going to die in an airplane. Let's see. Where's that going? So when we installed our fridge, it was a really tight fit. We insulated behind it, which is probably kind of stupid. We never really considered really hot weather, did no, we? No, we never really thought we were going to be somewhere really hot for a long period of time and it didn't really matter. And now we're stuck in a really hot place. Yeah, now we're stuck in Mexico and we're thinking of going south, which will be even hotter. So we've decided to have a bit of a change around to keep our fridge happy. Okay, so this is our rather expensive new fridge. The problem is, so at the back here, you have the condenser and the compressor. This gets really hot, as you would expect, but if you go in the cupboard where it fits, there's nowhere for the hot air to go, so it tends to heat up all of the cupboards around it and everything else. And it's bad for the compressor because it doesn't get to cool down so it means the fridge is on way more than the fridge should be on so we've taken all the insulation we had foam board in between these uh, metal run like uh, bars at the back so we've taken all that out to give it some more air we bought this grill off american amazon and delivered it to mexico 
and we're going to fit that at the top at the back to try and get the fridge some more airflow. Which means we're going to be cutting through Ruby's bodywork with minimal tools. It's probably going to be like a drill situation, like a million drill holes to cut something out. We need to walk. Cut it out. I'll grow back if you get it wrong, right? Not for the fridge. Our fridge wasn't the only thing struggling with the Mexican heat. Redneck aircon rock too. You take a very cheap pool box, make holes in the side, make a hole in the top for a very cheap fan. And you have air conditioning. Shove it full of ice. <laughs> it works. Sorted. Oh. Cheap as chips. So this is a pressure operated cooling mat we just bought Amy off Amazon and for the first time she's actually using it which is great because today is pretty warm Okay. This is a big one. Yeah. Oh, it's clear the dog. Oh, wow. Oh. Ah. oh, I see the dots on it. Yeah, now you can really see the red. Oh. Uh, so we've just been to La Paz. Our visa ran out yesterday. After a lot of paperwork filling and waiting around, we have got new visas sorted and we are officially, what, refugees of Mexico. Apparently. And it was only meant to be a five week trip apparently. <laughs> Not quite. So this is what the future of shopping looks like. We've gone from no beer to lots of beer. It is what? It's the first time we've bought a beer in a bar or a restaurant. Since the border closed, pretty much. Yeah. In April. Sure. Last time we went out was in Teo de Santos for those tacos. Well, they wouldn't let us buy beer. So no. <laughs> this is like the first beer I've ordered in a bar or something for, no. Cheers. Cheers. As the states around us started to relax their restrictions, we started going out on little day trips just to test the water.
So there's a reason why people say Mexican roads are an absolute pile of wank. First proper Mexican road experience. I fucking hate this road. That is what you call a very wrecked tyre. It's the same road that broke our charge controller. Fuck off. So we're sorting out an irrigation system today. But it doesn't really matter, nothing matters, so I will cry instead. And it means I'll uh look in August through the rest of September. I'm a running circles, trying to catch my breath. I've been trying everything I can. I ain't got nothing left. So today we were installing a shower and a sink. I've been staring at the ceiling. Our own I've been staring up on desert shower. Just about to test Everything it and see if it actually works. <laughs> <laughs> Go on then. Oh, oh now it's back! I think we forgot. <laughs> <laughs> we think. Oh, shit. Yes! What? Can you isolate it? Trying to catch my breath. I've been trying everything I can. But I ain't got nothing left. nothing left So after three long months at Rancho Pacifica Baja, we're going to take the bold step today of hitting the road once again in search of three campsites on the beach. Uh, a little bit apprehensive, not sure if we're going to get moved on, hopefully not. Hopefully we can start going back to the way we were travelling before. Only time will tell. You having fun? Everything in kind of way. Cupboard is organized. I think it's the tidiest that's ever looked. New pans, all good. It's very clean. Now I'm doing the food cupboard. During a time where we had no other options, Dane and Sabrina offered us a safe place to stay and for that we will always be grateful. <laughs> 